everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to out here on course with Al, doing a bit of short game today. We've just been speaking off camera, it seems to be that every other part of the game is progressing and short game might be holding us back just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So if we can get on top of this today, I think we'll be doing well. Yes, that's going to take some shots off. Beautiful, let's get into it. Yep, from here, we've got about a 20 yard chip shot. I just want you to use my 56 or 52. Play this as you would play as it. As I would normally yeah. play it. So you've hit two shots, you're just a little bit short. What would well, you do I'm from here? A, it's 52. Cool. Is strike more of a concern for the time being? In what sense? Are you thinking about where you want to land it or are you thinking about what you're trying to do here? No, I'm thinking about where I want, I want to land it on the green. Okay. That's what it's all going through me, is land it on the green. I know I've got a 52, so a little bit closer. Hmm. But that's all that's going through my head at the minute. Cool. It's that little, but it's just, I ain't even got a swing thought. Just advance it, yeah. just move it forward, yeah. yeah. Right, go for it. Got you, got you. Let's have a few. I know that one, that one's. You get that, you'll get the idea. Mm -hmm. but it's, I try and get rid of the thought, but. In back in my head, the one that I'm trying to get rid of is the one that's going through trees. Bladed and thinned and got you. That's the little devil just saying, go on, do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we've just discussed low point control is the issue we're too far behind it on almost every shot so we've seen a consistent pattern it's just a fault um we've noticed in the ball position with al does get too far forward we're going to make a ball position change where we move it more centrally and we're going to see if you can control that low point and get it just closer to that ball so we're putting an alignment stick down so that we're ensuring that central ball position every time one thing that you can do to help you make it more central is narrow your stance so from a narrow stance, I feel like you've got variation to move your ball minimally, whereas you start to go wider and there's potential then for it to want to go further forward, further back, yeah? So width-wise, I always advocate to everyone, go your club edge width apart in your feet. Okay. And then hopefully it should give us less variance. That's it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. Right. Lovely. Right, and that will conclude the toolbox for today. Thanks ever so much for watching, everyone. <laughs> I don't know why. Is there anything to... Is it all right to face it square on? Yeah, as long as you use bounce. So you've got to think square on is fine. Square on's how I play 90% of my chip shots. Right. But you've just got to make sure that trailing edge interacts with ground and not leading edge. As soon as your leading edge does, that's when you get chunky, that's when you get divots. Yeah. If you go trailing edge, the back of your club, if that can hit the ground, then it starts sliding, skidding, and you sound. What's the one thing you've got to do though, Al? Hit the ground. Hit the ground. The literally one thing you've got to do. Lovely. Look at this guy. So, one idea that we just discussed again, uh, we've noticed that Al had like a seven shot sequence where he went three really good strikes, three where we used the bounce and it was just a little bit behind it and got away with him and then one where the low point were too far behind. So, we've incorporated an idea where we move a bit more weight into the lead side, into the left side, and we're gonna see if that can crisp up the strikes again. And off camera, I just invented a new word, nippedness. The amount that you nip it. It goes like this. Good. Oof, hello. That was nice. Right then, slightly different location, slightly thicker lie. I've got quite a lot of green to work with. What club would you think about using from here? Now I've got that, I'd want to use 56. Okay. That's what I want to go to. I don't think the chip and bump, and I want to be able to sort of fly it. This is once I get the chipping right, that's sort of what I want to move to. Okay. And it's only cost, that's what I use. 
one thing I would say is like, we have got quite a lot of green to work with here. So to be a bit safer, I would go a little bit less loft. That's not to say though that 56 isn't right club. If you can play 56 and land it in the place that you need to. Yeah, yeah we'll probably have what, four or five weeks. See what you get best results with. Yeah, that was Sam Wedge length of swing with a pitching wedge, weren't it? So, just make an adjustment. I think with this one, you really only want to be pitching it 10 foot on green max. Good. Good one. That could have been up there, one of the best sessions we've had so far, that. That were really good. way that you've just, just changed the, the teeniest, tiniest of changes, just changing your low point, moving it further forward, your strikes were so much crispier then, and that wicked. Feeling a lot more confident with it now? Yeah, I feel like I can take it away and get there. Like we said earlier, confidence won't come no. straight away. It's going to take some just good practice, just keep striking it. You'll get to a place mentally where you think I'm just a good chipper now. Yeah. Definitely the bare bones of it were there today, weren't it? Come on, hold on. Do the usual like, share, subscribe, see you in the next one. What are we doing next? Have you on? Be on course, do you think, next time? I don't know what I've got to watch Let's see, let's see what the time constraint is because we've got on Cheers.